Hi guys, hello YouTube. My name is Numi and I'm back with you again for another coin video. But first, a little taste of what I've been doing over the last week, um, which may explain why relatively few videos have been posted. So, welcome back, and this is another video in the mega results, mega grading range or line of videos. And uh, there's actually two arrivals, two inbound arrivals of different sets of coins from different members to show you guys today. So uh, something for everyone and uh, sit back. Hope you're going to enjoy taking a look at these lovely coins. There's absolutely none of the usual stuff in this box. In fact, one of these coins at least is a total first for the Numistaka channel. So before we take a look at the coin that you guys probably won't have seen on this channel, in fact you definitely haven't seen one on this channel because this is the first one that I've come across, uh, I thought I'd show you some other coins that arrived that you will have seen, and uh, but haven't seen for maybe a little bit of a, a while on the channel. These coins certainly act as a great reminder as to just how beautiful early American coinage was. So we call them the Three Little Indians. So three Indian head eagles. Um, the big one here, the uh, $5 eagle, the half eagle. And then there's uh, the little one and the one that's even bigger, but with a different design. So all three eagles in one little video, what more could you guys want? And uh, I know a lot of you guys live over in America. You've got these in your collections. Pre-1933 gold is nothing new. But um, for us in the UK, we don't come across these very often. They may be, you know, very, very uh, common and undoubtedly they are pretty much kind of bullion plus a little bit over in the States. But uh, in the same way as you guys probably don't see too many sovereigns, we don't see too many pre-33 gold coins either. So before we take a closer look at those, let's have a look at this one. Have you seen one of these before? You may very well have done if you've been a fan of British coins. So this is a tuppenny piece, a cartwheel, two pence, made in copper, two ounces of copper, pretty much the thickest circulation coin that was made. And uh, it was made in only one year, 1797, uh, against a background of counterfeiting and a shortage of silver change. George III, you recognize that portrait. George III, uh, famous for being both mad and the guy who lost us, uh, the United States. Um, so he certainly was a king that went down in history. And this is one absolutely lovely historical bit of copper. Um, and these things have a, a pretty good following. It's been said by commentators that if you have one of these large copper coins in 1797, it would keep you in soap for a week. Although it is not clear just uh, how much soap the average person got through in a week or how filthy dirty they were. So uh, it's probably just gives you an idea of maybe uh, what, uh, what it was worth as a coin back then, a long, long time ago. So... Uh, Another couple of coins arrived, the other two little Indians. This one is uh, probably my favourite of the Indian head pre-33 coins. Um, very nice coin. I've got a couple of these in my collection. Uh, I haven't compared this one with the ones that I've got to see roughly what grade this is. But um, it's got a little bit of a kind of scratchy thing over the Indian headdress on the right. But the fields look pretty clear. So... Uh, might do pretty well. Hopefully it won't be marked down too much for that scratch. 
But I really do think this is the most beautiful, um, or one of the most beautiful American pre-33 coins. Maybe this and the St. Gordon's. If you guys had a choice between a pre-33 American coin and a British sovereign coin, which would you take? Which do you think is the nicer coin? Uh, and uh, within pre-33, which is your favourite? Uh, what size? What size is better to collect? Is it going to be a half eagle like this one, five-dollar coin, or maybe something larger like the ten-dollar? Indian or one of the large $20 coins as well. I know what I what I prefer. Um, if it were my choice, I'd probably go for either the half eagle like this as a general collector coin uh, or maybe even the quarter eagle, which is um, also a really nice choice. Not very many of those coins about in good condition. Quarter eagles are really actually quite difficult to find in good condition. But um, I, I see from prices on some of these coins that premiums have come down on a lot of these coins and now is a pretty good time to pick up uh, for just a little bit above spot, which is low anyway, some coins with a numismatic kind of premium attached to them. The next package that I've got for you guys today is very different. So these are coins that arrived, they're more kind of world coins and very distinctive in a way. Probably none of these coins you'll have seen before. So if you like seeing things that are totally new to you, just keep watching and keep your eyes open and uh, let me know in the comments if you think I'm right, if you recognize any of these particular coins, which I think are pretty esoteric really. You know, I hadn't seen them before anyway. Maybe you guys with more experience know exactly what they are. So let's have a look at the coins. So the first one we've got here is a beautiful Victorian Gothic coin made of gold and minted in Somalia. So uh, yeah, Somalia are minting a Gothic Victorian celebration. It's a little kind of off the wall, isn't it? Why, why would Somalia be minting a Victorian coin like this? Um, I mean, the design is lovely. It's actually a really nice coin. Uh, it's not obviously exactly true to the Victorian stuff that was around in 1847. But uh, this version is legal tender in the Republic of Somalia. Let's have a little close-up look at it. A thousand shillings minted in 2001. One of the interesting things about this coin is that it's actually made out of 0.375 fine gold. So only a little bit over a third of this metal is gold. Uh, it's also known as nine carat gold. So it's a kind of special edition and they've kind of used the fact that it's uh, got Somalia status as legal tender on it in some way. But um, it's really a bit of a kind of funny one, that one. This one is more my type of coin. It's a little bit more honest in many ways. So uh, Helve Helvetia is uh, the name for Switzerland. It's a 20 franc gold coin, 0.9 fine gold, 6.45 grams. And uh, the portrait was a uh, engraved by Fritz Landry. And this is very widely collected. All of these different 20 franc gold pieces, very, very widely collected, easy to find, easy to buy, fairly low premiums and they make a really nice collection. So you can get them from different countries in Europe round about the same time period, round about the same premium. Um, very, very nice. And a lot of people like these and collect them. Uh, I think this is a very attractive coin. And if I had a choice between that and the nine carat gold one, uh, I would always take the, uh, the 20 franc gold piece in 0.9 fine gold. 
You often see the name Tuvalu on the back of commemorative coins. Um, you don't often see one which is this old, and uh, even though there are only 9,000 people odd who live on the island of Tuvalu, they seem to issue quite a few coins. This one is actually a strange one because it is 14 carat gold, so 0.5833 fine gold. So a little bit better than the 9 carat, but not as good as the 0.9. And uh, this one is not a massively expensive coin, um, but it, and it's quite interesting in people. People are building up collections of these slightly oddball coins, and this is another one of those oddball coins that uh, is uh, found around, and you can pick these up at around £200 or something like that. And to finish off our video today, we've got another oddball coin. It's maybe not quite so oddball, but uh, this is a double sovereign from Tristian de Cahuna, so a little island, a crown kind of colony island. And this coin is a coronation celebration, coronation anniversary, 50 years, 2013 from 1953. And it's actually engraved with its edition. So this is number 55 of a total of 99 coins that were minted. And uh, this is probably around about a £500 coin, something like that. But quite an interesting design, quite nice, and uh, certainly rare. Very, very rare. 99 of these minted only. TDC, that you can see there, um, stands for Tristian de Cahuna. Not a place I've ever been, but I have graded coins from TDC before. Uh, my son bought a Sovereign, a 2012 one. And I did grade a couple of months ago a set of, uh, I think they were also 2012 celebration sovereigns from TDC. So a variety of different interesting coins. Hope you enjoyed this series of slightly not normal off-ball kind of coins from the Nimistaka channel. Let me know what you guys think.